Today, I've got a new switch from Netgear. Now this here is a eight port multi gigabit, 10 gig ethernet, ultra 60 PoE++ smart switch. And this is basically made to be able to power uh, Wi-Fi 6 access points over 2.5 gig so that you're not bottlenecked at a standard gigabit port. Now the model number, if you wanna look it up, is the MS510TXUP-TAC100 NAS. So let's go ahead and crack it open. Now, a buddy of mine actually lent this to me, so it is not mine. But Netgear, if you're watching, I'd love for you to go ahead and send me some stuff like this. So inside we've got a manual, the switch itself, and we've got the power cord here, and some rack mount ears and screws and stuff. Now we'll go ahead and open it up. Now the construction of it is it is pretty heavy see all the ports right here. So on the left here, you have these four ports that have gigabit and 2.5 gig, and it also supports 100 meg or fast ethernet. And then here we've got uh, 5 gig, 2.5 gig, uh, gig, 100 meg, and also uh, it shows here that it supports 10 gig as well. And here we have two SFP plus ports. Now I was told that I was allowed to crack it open as long as there weren't any stickers on here saying that the warranty is voided by opening it. So after further inspection, it does not have that. So let's crack it open. So it looks like we have seven screws on this. This just lifts up. Oh, I'm gonna have to take these out here too. Cool. So if we take a look at these chips right here, these are Broadcom BCM 5912-1B0K MLGs. And I'll have links down below for everything, but here is the spec sheet for here, and it is a integrated cert Broadcom. And we can see this is in relation to the PoE, or power over ethernet, on the switch. Now these chips here, along with these here as well, uh, I was unable to really find any information on them. Uh, I'll still go ahead and pop a higher resolution photo up on my Instagram. If you're not already following me on there, go ahead and head on over there. I'll have a link in the description. And real quick, you'll see we've got four chips right here by Realtek. They are the RTL 8221 B. And these chips, after pulling it up here, it looks like support up to 2.5 gig here. So if we scroll on down, there's a bit more information about them. And if you want to read more about this, again, I have all the links of everything in the description for you. Now, this chip right here is the LVC-14A, and pulling that up here, it is a inverter or voltage regulator. Now, here is the 4LVC-14A, and this is a inverter. Next up here are these chips, which are the 4HC-164, and they are 8-bit parallel out serial shift registers. And here is the spec sheet here from Texas Instruments. Next right here, we have a TPS-53355, and that is a sync step-down swift converter with eco mode, whatever that means for this. Drop a comment down below if you know. Now the next chip, which is this guy right here, is by Winbot, and that is the W632GU6NB-TAC11. Now here is the spec sheet on it, and taking a look at it, it has two gigs of uh, RAM here, and that is DDR3L SD RAM. Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to remove these here because this switch is not mine, And uh, but I suspect that the chips that are under here are probably would actually control the uh, multi-gig uh, and 10-gig and SFP Plus ports as well here. And I was a bit bummed out that some of these other chips I actually couldn't find any other information on online. Like I couldn't find any spec sheets and stuff. Now let's go ahead and put it back together and see if it powers on. So now that I've got it back together, I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. Let's hear how loud this thing is. So far, I don't really hear it much over the fans behind me and the stuff in my own server rack. Lights just came on. Now I do have this hooked up on a 10 gig port and it's supposed to go ahead and get DHCP off the network. And something that I was reading about in the manual is that these ports here can do uh, PoE on the two and a half gig, but these ports over here only do one gig PoE or two and a half gig without PoE. 
I'm not sure if you can hear this or not. I got it right up to the microphone, but it's pretty quiet. So I went ahead and logged into my Unify controller here and started to type in MS since I knew that the part number started with MS for the model number. And sure enough, they did actually register that in DNS as the host name. So I got the IP address here that it grabbed from DHCP of 192.168.99.233. Now I am over on the device. I'll skip the registration. Now the default password for this is ultra secure. It's just password, all lowercase. Well, that's good to see. It actually wants you to change the password. All right, now that I have the password changed, log back in. Now it looks like you can actually activate a uh, Insight Cloud Management platform on this, but that's completely separate from what I wanna go into the video on this here today. So now let's go under maintenance. I got update and HTTP firmware file update. All right, so once we are logged in, we go ahead and scroll down on the system information page. And we can see the model name and then the boot version and the software version. Now, if you come on over to Netgear's website, uh, the latest version of the firmware is 1.0.5.5. So I went ahead and downloaded that and it extracted that out. And now coming back over to the switch, we'll go under maintenance and then update an HTTP firmware file update. Click on browse. I'll go into the folder where I downloaded everything and extracted it and select the file. Now I'll go ahead and click on apply. And now we just hurry up and wait. So now it shows that it is complete. So we're going to go ahead and come over to reset and device reboot. And then we'll go ahead and check the box and hit apply to go ahead and reboot it. Now that it has rebooted, I'm going to go ahead and log back into it. Scroll on down, and now you can see the software version is 1.0.5.5. Coming over to Netgear's website here, if you click on release notes, it goes ahead and shows you all the different changes that they made in this release. And it looks like they added SSH or Secure Shell, and this is now enabled by default. So let's check that out. So I tried both uh, PuTTY and MobaXterm to be able to SSH in, and they just can't get in. So then I was poking around here under security and access, and we see SSH, it is enabled, and there's host key management here, and it shows that there's keys present, but the key generation in progress is none, and you can also update host keys from your machine. So let's just generate some new RSA keys. So it's in progress. Now I did call up Netgear support, and they claimed that if I use the username of admin and then the password that I defined for the switch, that it would let me in. However, that was not the case. Hmm, interesting. Looks like it actually worked. Well, that was interesting because earlier it didn't work at all until apparently I had to regenerate the keys. I don't know why. And support uh, was talking to me in mid-sentence actually just cut off and they have not called me back. But anyways, we are in. So here I just did a question mark and you can see the available commands. I wonder if, cool. So it looks like I can abbreviate here, just like on Cisco. So show ru or show run, so that's cool. So we'll come into config mode, the interface, and then you have the various interfaces, the multi gigabit ethernet, the X gigabit ethernet, and the X multi gigabit ethernet. So now let's uh, configure the power on that. I'll just change that to never. All right, so I guess we'll just go ahead and save that. So if we come back over under system and then POE and then go under advanced and port configuration, we can actually see the change that we made from the command line right here. So that is one or MG1 and the port power is disabled. Now, if you're not used to using the command line, then one of the main key benefits is being able to script a configuration so that you can rapidly go ahead and uh, configure a device or restore it. Now, sure, you might be able to go ahead and like back up a configuration file and reload it. However, if you have a problem, say after updating the firmware, uh, you might not necessarily know why the configuration could be flaking out after just reapplying that config file. But if you went ahead and use the command line interface, you could actually see the results of each of the commands that you're putting into that script. So if 
the manufacturer changed something within the command line interface that is now causing it to error, then you can see what the problem might actually be so that you can fix it. So who is the switch for? At $659 MSRP, uh, it's not exactly cheap. Now, if you are a enthusiast or power home user or a small business, then this might be a switch that might appeal to you. Now, at this price point, you get four ports that you can use for standard PoE or up to 2.5 gig. And then you have four other ports to be able to support 2.5 gig PoE as well as up to 10 gig. And then you have two SFP plus ports again for 10 gig. Now it also does have optional Insight Cloud Management. Uh, let me know if that's something that you guys want me to check out in a future video as well. Now before you go, I'm going to put some videos up here that you might want to check out. So like some other networking videos or some other videos or playlists over here as well too. Now thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.